Oh shit. What up y'all? Were you spying on me? Hmm? Spying? Yeah. I think so. I am so excited, you guys. We just hit 100 subscribers. Woo! I'm so excited about this, you guys. Like, 100 subscribers, that is awesome. Especially considering that this whole YouTube thing is new to me and um, I just kind of started YouTubing here not too long ago, just a couple months ago. So yeah, maybe two months ago, really getting into it. But so yeah, you guys, I just wanted to say thank you. Like I needed to take a moment to say thank you for subscribing and supporting your girl. So, and if you guys haven't noticed, I'm having a really freaking bad hair day today. Like what, what, what is this thing doing? I don't know. Also, Merry Christmas, you guys, and Happy New Year's. I love the holidays, and um, it's crazy because, you know, my channel's mainly about addiction, overcoming it, and whatnot, all of the crazy shit that went on in the past, but um, yeah, I've been sober now almost for four years, so this is probably my third Christmas in a row now that I've been sober and actually able to enjoy, you know, the Christmas spirit. So we already took our Christmas trees down, but while we're right here, I'm gonna show you guys the nutcrackers. All right. All right, y'all. I love me some nutcrackers. So cute, right? Yeah, I love them. All right, let me stick y'all back in here. <clears throat> All right, you guys, so here we go. Today's story time. Today's story time is gonna be a little compilation. Two different stories, because they're both really short, but I wanted to give you guys some content and start off the New Year's with a bang, baby. No, I'm just kidding, that sounds really lame, kind of stupid, but. All right, so today's story time is the time that I almost stabbed a bitch, okay? And then, um, yeah, I'll tell you guys what the other one's about here soon. So, this was the heart of my addiction, you know? In the heart of Seattle, if anyone knows uh, Aurora Street area, that freaking area is so crazy. Well, uh, it was one of those days where I couldn't get a hold of my guy. I think he went to jail and I didn't have too many dealers, so I usually just kept it like very small as far as like how many or, you know, who I hit up to go get dope at the time. But um, yeah, so I was like, well, what the hell am I, am I gonna do? I'm sick and I'm desperate, like I have money. I just, you know, I need me some shit. So who am I gonna call? What am I gonna do? So I was like, you know what? I don't know anyone else who has the shit. Like, I wonder if I was to just drive down like Aurora Avenue area, if I could find someone who looked ish, like they either knew where to get it or possibly had it on them. So I was like, all right, bam, that sounds smart not <laughs> but just just roll with me so get in my car i'm driving and it's like you know looking out the window like ah uh, you know that person you know that person looks like they're high as shit but they also look homeless so i'm not gonna deal with the middleman third you know wheel type no i'm just gonna keep looking at the window all right you know going going oh boom i see somebody that looks like you know she could help me out so she was a bigger black chick and uh just you know down there in aurora so i was like all right hey and she looked at me you know out my window i was like hey and she's like what and i was like dude could you help me find some shit and she's like oh yeah girl i got you i was like all right hop in so i unlocked my door she came inside sat down and now we're driving right so i was like all right i need some dope like bad do you know where to get me she's like yeah i actually have some on me right now so i was like what it's my day isn't it so we pull over and now i'm just sitting in my car right 
keep in mind, I actually didn't say this before, but I'll say it now. So keep in mind, like, I know Renton, Seattle area. Like, you don't want to mess around with some certain people. Like, there is a lot of dangerous people out there, especially in, you know, the drug scene, the drug world. So, um, before I even allowed her to get into my car, I had my pocket knife, which the blade was probably, it was a good size, like, pocket knife, about like that. So I already had it open and, you know, sitting, like, right here. Like that. So she's right here. I'm right here. I got my hand on my wheel and I got the knife right here. And so, um, yeah, she's like, well, how much do you want? And I was like, uh, you know, 50 is fine. And she's all right. She's like, all right, hand me the money. And I was like, well, hand me the dope first. Then I'll hand you the money. And right when I said that, she's like, bitch, do you think I'm playing with you? Hand me the money. And I was like, no, hand me my dope first and I will give you my money. Like, fuck no. Like, the fuck, like, you think this is? Like, no, I'm not stupid and I'm not about to get jacked either. So, she's like, bitch, you think I'm playing with you? She grabbed my keys that were in my ignition and she turned my keys off. I mean, my car. Turn my keys off? Yeah turn my car off, grab my keys out, and has my keys in her lap, like, bitch. And so, <laughs> I don't know what overcame me, like, no fear, keep in mind, like, I had no fear back then either, plus, you know, I was, you know, doing drugs and freaking chemical brain, you know, that ain't thinking right, but I grabbed my knife, and I held it up, and I was like, give me my fucking keys back, and get the fuck out of my car, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, whoa, 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 dude, like, chill out, like, I was, I just meant, like, you know, I have dope, you know, just give me the money, I'll give you the dope, like, you know, everything's cool, relax, like, we don't gotta be fighting like this, like, here, t take your fucking keys, she puts them back in my ignition, like, starts my car up again for me, and I was like, get the fuck out of my car, and so she grabbed her shit and got the fuck out. So, looking back at this scenario, that was not smart of me to do at all. In the moment, I think that that was one of my only options, right? Either that or her stab me or something crazy happens. She fucking steals my car, then I'm fucked. But, yeah, that was my only option in that moment was to, you know, you know, scare a bitch. What's good? Scare a bitch, you know? So that's what I did, and it worked, it scared her. Thank God she wasn't crazy in her own mind. And, you know, when I pulled the knife out, she do something or say something crazy, like I'm not fucking scared of you, and then kept on about her way, or pulled out her knife and tried to go in on me. Next thing you know, like, bang, 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 bang. Actually, they're not guns, but you know, slice, slice, slice. Anyways, thank God nobody got hurt that day because that scenario is a perfect recipe for disaster. So, yeah, it was terrifying, but uh, we got through it. We made it. So, the next story, hitting you guys double time. Two stories because Christmas passed, New Year's, boom, boom. Anyways, you guys. Next thing I wanted to talk about here about this story time is about the time when I, all right, about the time that I bought my first gun illegally, because, you know, couldn't do it legally. <laughs> yeah, I uh, couldn't do it legally because um, as a juvenile, I ended up getting three felonies in one night. I was 14 years old, as crazy as that shit sounds. But yeah, so at the time I couldn't own a gun. I can now, cause you know, it sealed my juvenile record, et cetera, et cetera. Don't have anything, you know, violently related on my record or, uh, any felonies today. So that's, that's legit. Thank God. Yeah, I should, I should be in prison, honestly, for the rest of my life. I've been caught for all of the crimes that I've done. And that goes for a lot of people out there. But anyways, this isn't a crazy story. It's just going to be like a chill story about the time that I bought my first gun. 
uh, down there in Renton. I felt like I needed it. Something crazy had just happened, and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna be fucking out here, like, <laughs> unprotected out here in these streets. Like, no, no. Especially, like, me, skinny little, like, I'm hella, hella skinny. Woo! Super skinny, but, um, and tiny, and, you know, these things right here, pew, 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 pew. These things right here won't do too much damage, so. You know, I felt like I needed a little bang bang on me, but um, anyway, so I was with my ex at the time, and we'll call him Dick, because his name rhymes with Dick. And he was a dick, but <laughs> anyways. So yeah, I was like, all right, Dick. Uh, that's gonna sound so retarded saying that the entire time, but we'll do it, we'll do it, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right so my ex dick was with me and I was like all right well I know where to get a gun like this guy has um, a few he wants me to come check him out like boom like let's go so we hopped in the car we got to the location keep in mind I would met up with this guy a couple of times I think he sold dope too I think that's how I knew him or a friend of a friend hooked us up because because they knew I was looking for a piece and they knew that he you know was the hookup so uh yeah got to the apartment went inside went to the back room dude brings out his like case and uh lock lock case whatever so puts the code in opens it up and boom it was like all these lights like shining in on this case full of guns little guns too real cute like real cute he knew what i was looking for like you know telepathically or whatever but yeah, in a sense, like, I just wanted something very, very small that I could conceal that will do some fucking damage. Like, that's what I needed. That's what I wanted. And yeah, so when he opened up the case, I was stoked. It's like, oh my gosh. Okay. Pulled out the first one. It was small, you guys. You see this vape right here? It was... I remember holding the gun like this, and it... it it literally, when I turn my hand, you wouldn't be able to see it. That's how small it was, starting right here, right? So very small. It was like a little, um, it was a Ruger. Ruger? I don't know how to say it, but it was a Ruger uh, something. 45, fuck, I don't know what it was, okay? Because I'm not good with, like, names of guns. But it was a handgun, hand pistol, I think is what you call it. So when he's like... All right, you want that one? I was like, yes. How much? He's like, four fifty. I was like, boom, you got it. Here you go. So that was it. You know, we smoked a little bit, gave a little, oh, thank you so much, type of thing. Like, homie, hook up. Like, I'll, you know, let other people know that you're the man. You know. So, anyways, I left. We left. Dick and I, we left together. And yeah, that was the story. Uh, the first time that I bought my gun <laughs> illegally down in Renton. And let me tell you what, I kept that little baby on me every single where I went. Every single where? <laughs> every single place that I went, I had it with me. And at that moment, I felt protected, like super protected. I wasn't scared anymore. You know, sometimes you get anxiety when you're down in this big old city, like dangerous city alone. You don't have family, you don't have friends that really have your back. And that was my situation. I was down there, you know, alone really. But yeah, so that, that gun made me feel powerful. And, um, you know, once word got around that I, Paris, you know, was the name that I went by. Nobody actually knew me for my real name. Nobody down there knew my real name, India. They only knew Paris, that was it. Even the cops would call me Paris because, no, no, they'd call me Cracked cracked Out Barbie or, or Cracked Out Paris Hilton, some shit like that. But yeah, I guess I looked like a cracked out version of Paris Hilton, which is why a lot of people called me that. Even in high school, I guess that was a nickname, but yeah. So, yeah, and, and later on here in the future, we'll go into some story times, too, about some of the situations that I got myself in or that I found myself in um, that I had to, you know, 
pull my gun out for show or whatever, just to let people know like, hey, don't fuck with me. Like, I have a gun and I'm not scared to use it, right? Because at the time, like, I was fucking crazy, <laughs> like really crazy and uh, had lost my mind in a sense, but yeah, so that's it you guys, that's all I have. I hope that you enjoyed this video, super short, two different little mini stories all in one for you guys. Hope you guys liked my nutcrackers. Ooh, freaking love these nutcrackers, they're so cute. Yeah, they're really cute, but yeah. And I hope you guys had a happy, 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 Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. That's all I got for you guys. See you in my next video. Bye.